fuck you been? I was on vacation. I don't take fucking vacations, but I had to take a vacation. I got a wife and a child now, and I got to act like a fucking uh, individual. I can't just, I didn't take my, listen, I was with my wife 15 years and never took her to New York. Really? That's where I'm from. Never fucking never took, her. took her? Never, never. I'm not in the mood. I only go out back there to do comedy. I don't go back to the dilly dally when I go back. To, when I go back to New York, I fly in, I go to my favorite Chinese restaurant, I do radio. The next day after fucking radio, I go to the cemetery, I put flowers on my mom's grave. And then I do my four fucking shows and I get the fuck out of there on the first flight on Sunday. Just Damn. like I do every other goddamn city. That's it. I try to see some people in between, you know? A school teacher or two, maybe, you know, something. Really? Yeah, I still talk to my school teachers, two of them. I was going to go to dinner with the one, but he had to take his uh, grandkid out of the hospital. He wanted to meet me later on, but we were leaving early, so I couldn't meet him at 10. That's for fucking late awesome, dinner. dude. So, you know, we never really took a break from we the never. podcast. And we did last Monday and last Wednesday. I took off Monday. We were going to do last night. But I tell you, Theo, I hate fucking doing podcasts when I'm tired. I, yeah. I don't want to give nobody, as Jimmy Schuber says, the short shrift. Mm -hmm. You follow me? I was just out of it last night. Yeah. The five and a half hour flight with the fucking baby. Oh, that's miserable, dude. See, by myself, I'll eat a fucking pot cookie. Right. And I get stoned. You had I the fall family. asleep for half. But when you have the family, you got to be. And I got caught smoking vapor on the fucking pen. Mm. Tremendous. Mm -mm. I had one of those uh, vapor pens, and I just filled it up. It was, it was it was just brand new. I took the inhaler with me. They mm -hmm. have an asthma inhaler now. So I took for the, the pot for the reefer. That, yeah. Oh, it, it's dabs. It fucks you up. So I took that with me to New York, and I sprayed it twice. You know, a couple times on the plane, and it kept me there. And then I hit it when I was in New York, and I hit it with Ari when I went over to see the tree and the fucking uh, Saks Fifth Avenue and all that shit. And I ran out, so I had this brand new tube. It's a gram of oil from Perennial. And I opened it up before I got on the plane. I charged so? it up. First 10 hits, it's like fucking death hits. Like Damn. they're just fucking clouds of smoke. So I hit it two times. Then I got on the plane. And like two hours into the flight, I look at my daughter. And every time I would hit it, it would go by my daughter because she had the window seat. So I go, I can't let her have it. So I go, let me go to the bathroom. I'm Damn. in the bathroom with the fucking iPod on, listening to Pink Floyd. <laughs> no, you're not. Yes, yeah. I am. I got the iPod plane, on. Bro. This is how yeah. fucking crazy I am. I'm, I'm not listening. It's Wish You Were Here. That's the album I'm listening to because it was like Shine On You Crazy Diamond what? and Have a Cigar. I'm f I ate edibles. I had a, I had like three, four red stars. Oh, left. so you had a little magic in your system. Oh, I was fucked. I, had, I was fucked up for the first two and a half hours because I got... I didn't get fucked up on the way there, and it made a big difference. I got agitated on the two-hour mark. On the two-and-a-half-hour mark, if you don't have something, once the move, once Mad Max is finished, right. you're ready to kill a motherfucker <laughs> on a flight. Mad Max is not the movie to watch on a fucking plane because there you are sitting there. Everybody's driving, <laughs> jumping over people and shit, shooting motherfuckers, and you're sitting there next to like some fucking politician or some shit. You want to get up. You want to get up. So I said, fuck that. So I dosed myself on the way out. Damn. I had Virgin. I had a main cabin select. It's the one behind first class. Mm -hmm. So we could all sit together because in first class, we couldn't all sit together. I would have to sit by myself and she'd be fucking crawling back and forth. So we're like, fuck that. Just get the main cabin select. How tall is the child you have? She's a fucking midget. She's three. You know, she's just a little baby. But how tall do you think she is? Uh, She's up to... Oh, that's two. that's not very tall. No, she's a little baby. Oh, that's not so very tall. So I got up, I go to the bathroom, I close the fucking door, and I'm in there, and I'm hitting this pen, and I see clouds, Theo, and I'm like, wow. What and color I'm was that? Fucking clouds of smoke, and I'm hitting this vapor, and I'm hitting this fucking sound. <laughs> With your iPod on. With the iPod on, <laughs> listen to fucking fuck? shine on, you crazy diamond. And all of a sudden, I hear... <laughs> And I see the little red light going on. They're like, open up. Are you smoking in there? And I put the thing in my pocket, and I take this out, and I blow a couple clouds of this shit. And I go, hold on. Like, I'm putting my dick in my pants, which I really did piss. And then I fucking wash my hands, and I open up. I go, what's the problem? And she goes, were you smoking in here? I go, no. Wow. I go, do I look like I was smoking in here? <laughs> do I look like And she it? looked at me. She goes, does this smell like smoke? And she took, oh, they take everything out, the garbage. They do everything. They look for really? the cigarette. Yeah. Oh, wow. And now, what were you doing the whole time? Just standing there I'm like, standing there going, I don't do know anything. what happened. I banged it. When I came in, the plane shifted, and I hit the wall. And that's the next thing you know, you people were knocking on my thing. And they're like, we don't smell no smoke. I wonder what made it go off. And I'm sitting there going, they fucking know. They're just playing me. Oh, really? But then they were cool the rest of the flight. Espionage, bro. I sat there. They were cool. And then at the end, I gave my wife the keys. I told my wife, I go, listen, they called me in the bathroom. 
uh, I'm gonna get arrested, so take the car keys. I'll see you at the house. What did she say? She just fucking looked the other way and like shook her head. What is my wife gonna fucking say at this age? Damn. I'm 50. What, what are you gonna say to me? You're punished? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, and then I walked off the fucking plane like I owned LA. Wow. Nobody said dick to me. And that was, did you think, though, somewhere in your head that whenever you got to LA, there was gonna be people? Oh, there? fuck yeah. They've been waiting uh. for me before. I've been approached at the plane one time on the way to Columbus. I is it kind of cool or is it just fucking not cool? If you're getting off a plane, you got an ounce of weed in your nutsack. Yes. Yeah, it ain't fucking cool. Be uncomfortable. But if you get off the plane and you're cool, you know, you don't, like, the one time I was in Columbus, I had weed on me. And some guy said, I didn't do nothing. He leaned back. And I go, hold on one second. And he turned on. He goes, fuck you. So I said, fuck you. Or something. I kicked the chair and he went and told the story. So I was the bad guy the rest of the fucking flight. Damn. Oh, jeez. And then do you start to feel like the fucking bad guy, too? You're like, oh, you oh, want no, a bad you, guy? Oh, you start yeah. saying shit in your head. You yeah. want a fucking bad yeah, guy? Fuck me, cocksucker. Put that seat back again. Yeah. And here's what happened. We went to Columbus. They got us off the plane. They got uh, statements from both of us, and they let us go. And a year later, they got on the plane. That same fucking guy's on the uh, plane. Uh, go, How you doing? And he just <laughs> sat there the whole time like a little fucking. So in all your years animal. Of, of being on the plane and like having weed under your nut and all that, you never once smoked a cigarette in the plane? No. Wow. In 1983, I was flying. You used to be to... able to, didn't you? Yeah, you could smoke in the fl- in the flights. In Russia, you can't have heard. Really? Mm-hmm. Do you anything smoke? in Russia? Uh-uh. No, no, but, but I heard that you can, though. You could smoke in, the, in like, certain areas. You could smoke on a plane. But I'll tell you what I did see one fucking time, though. Uh, fuck, you broke my tent. I don't even know what I was going to say to you. Now. Smoking on a plane? Smoking on a plane. Smoking on a plane. You Russia? You never once smoked on a plane? Yeah. No, but in 1984, February 1984, I got on the plane in, in Aspen. At, it was Aspen, Denver, Denver, Jersey. On the way back from Denver to Jersey, there was a soldier next to me, and I had a brown bowl and weed. And I'm like, you want to get high? That's when you could smoke cigarettes on a plane. Hey. And he's like, let's go do it. We went to the back fucking other thing. Me and this guy had a wooden fucking bowl. I put the weed in there, and we each took two puffs. The fucking whole plane smelled of like course. weed. Of course. Wow. They were pissed. Who's smoking marijuana on the plane? We're going to search. They didn't do shit. I walked out of there with that soldier saluting the cops and <laughs> shit. Yeah, I take a chance from time to time. You know? For a soldier, you got to, bro. I'd get a soldier high. Fuck, I'd get him doped out of his brain if I had enough dope for him. They fucking press heavy-duty charges on you one night, Theo Vaughn. I got so fucked up in an airport. I had 12 ounces of blow on me. And what? I was coming from New Jersey. No. Do people story. from New Jersey get busted for coke more often than other I people? You I think? don't fucking know. I I was a fucking criminal, and I was <laughs> I was living in I was living in Aspen, and coke was eighteen hundred and eighteen hundred an ounce. Right. And I'm like, are you fucking people kidding me? I'm paying eight hundred, and they're fucking beautiful ounces, and I could cut it and still make money. I go fuck it. So I started getting guns and bringing them to the East Coast and started bringing coke back. But this was the problem that I would take the one o'clock flight from uh, New Jersey to Denver, and that's really 3 o'clock, which would get me in there like at 7, mm-hmm. and it would start snowing. I still had to take a connecting flight from Denver to Aspen. Uh, that flight would always get canceled. Here I am in Denver Airport with geeked. 12 ounces of blow, geeked out of my face at the fucking bar. I remember one night I was at the bar just mm-hmm. drinking, fucking doing lines in the bathroom, and I kept putting the Coke in the locker. And I kept spending all my money in quarters taking the coke out. And I became friends with a guy at a bar. Me and him started snorting. We got fucking lit at 6 a.m. I stayed in the airport all night getting fucking coked up, jerking off in the men's store, in the fucking bathroom. That is dark and awesome. That is fucking, yeah, yeah. Dude, that's the dark side. Oh, my God. That's the worst, bro. When you're just up with your fucking ideas, feeling your fucking pulse. <laughs> What's up, Lisa? Yeah, it's been a week without an edible. I know. I'm just glad and I never did And you're back from out of space. I don't know if you guys know. I'm this. pretty high, man. Oh, no. Fuck yeah. We yeah. don't fuck around. Oh, yeah. Theo Vaughn, my boy joined jiu-jitsu two you months did? ago, three months ago, and yep. he did his first fucking tournament. I've been going to jiu-jitsu <laughs> no for two way, fucking really. years, and I'm still scared of going to the tournament. Lee went Saturday. It's, it's so much more fun than he practice. He took third fucking place. No well, way. Out of three people. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro. That's still no, bro. You know what place I took? No fucking place. Yeah, that's all right? true. I, I wasn't that's there. True. I was walking around the fucking Central Park with ducks, <laughs> and there you are fucking choking motherfuckers. My heart goes out to you, bro. You're a bad motherfucker. 
Yeah, it's commendable, bro. You could have fucking commendable, bro. You could end up in fourth place, right? You could have got disqualified. You could have showed up. I, yeah. I, I, I was I. I had a little bit of a like I have bronchitis right now, so I wanted to quit, but I knew if I didn't do it, you, John Bud, and everyone would kill me. So I'll just go. Nah, we wouldn't how. have killed you. I understand. <laughs> what was no, the match like? I Tell wanted, about the match. I wanted to see you play out the hand, Lee. I see. I'm not. I was. I was never scared of it. Like, like I've, I've said, I wrestled in high school. It was never good, but I knew I wasn't gonna like physically die or occasionally no, no, someone no. breaks an arm or something. But that's not even the end of the world. Um, it really, I've been losing weight for the past couple of years and it really kicked it into gear that I need to finish losing the weight. Cause I was rest, I was, because it was a smaller tournament, I'm 228 right now. I was right. going against people who were like 290, 280. So it was, I, it wasn't, it wasn't an ideal situation for me. Were you pretty like, were you pretty like, did you smoke first? No, oh God. People ask me that, man. I. I can't imagine I don't doing smoke that high. Before jiu jitsu, it makes her. <laughs> really? When Javier was choking me that night and I was stoned out of my mind, I was like, Are you? I was like, I just it's, had to it's laugh. It's a different world. Is it? Oh. Could you, you be high and do it? No. I tried a couple times and almost had heart attacks. <laughs> oh, damn. Because when you start breathing heavy, your mind <laughs> oh, takes you away. Yeah. So, you know, like when you're on an edible and you breathe heavy, like when you're, like when I go to jiu jitsu this morning, I was breathing heavy. Like yeah. I was Hell having yeah. a hard time. Yeah, they used to, yeah. So if I would have done an edible, the edible takes your mind away. And all of a sudden your mind, the edible tells your mind you're about to have a heart attack. And your fucking heart starts pounding just from listening to your mind. Oh, damn. It's not even true. It's sometimes fiction. just here I'll start having like a little bit of a little panic attack. A little like really? sometimes, yeah. yeah, the edibles. Let me tell you something. Edibles don't, aren't copacetic for everybody, man. They create a lot of anxiety. A lot of people say, you know, I've been, I like smoking pot, but it, for me it gives me anxiety. Yeah. That's not good for you. It's not good for you at all. If you get that uncomfortable feeling. There's times we eat fucking 8,000 milligrams of edibles, and it's an uncomfortable feeling. You yeah. go through an hour of like, Jesus Christ, this is terrible. I feel I'm pretty uncomfortable right now. I feel pretty high. Do you really? <laughs> yeah. Because I don't ever smoke, so I feel fucking... When did you start comedy? Pretty high, high, man. I You've been around in LA for like 10 years, right? Yeah. So I started like 12, 13 years ago. Okay, because I know you were in LA. You were really young, like 2005. You were doing something. I was young, man. Do you ever miss the weight? Do you ever miss the weight, bro? I miss eating what I want to eat. Yeah. I miss, like, I didn't care. Like, how much would you all. eat? Would you just eat the fuck out of something oh, sometimes? Oh, yeah. Oh, that I sounds worked. nice, man. I worked. Really? Yeah, just fucking get whatever you want. Oh, just it's fucking great. put it in your mouth. It's like, even football, like, it's depressing for me. I don't watch football. Like, I used to watch football all day, and I would get a large pizza and 12 wings, fucking six Diet Cokes. Oh, wow. Just great. Just and not even worry about it. it. Just not even worrying about it at all. Did you ever sleep on a fucking like piece of crust or something? Like you were just eating like a <laughs> fucking monster. Not not normally. Like we used to do this podcast at six a.m. Mm-hmm. and I would work what? nights. Yeah, we used to, we did it for like, like a year for like at six a.m. Really? at six a.m. and I was working nights on a TV show, so I'd go from there to here, and then I would like it'd be like eight in the morning, and I'd be getting Jack in the Box. Damn. And like sometimes I'd just pass out. From it was, eating it? Well, no, just from all these things. But then I'd pass out, but like the the rappers would still <laughs> oh, okay. be on my couch or something. It's terrible. Oh, okay. Because um, <laughs> I never you never hear like people's like fucking eating stories. Everybody tells their weight loss story. Like I want to hear oh, I when you was it. just oh. fucking hiding chocolate in your fucking cheeks, man. When you're just filling your gills up. I used to go. I, I got I got up, I got up to three fifteen. That was the highest I ever got. Yeah. It, at a certain point, I was every every night. Getting two packages of Reese sticks and two either uh, Swedish fish or gummy bears. And Reese my, my, sticks. Yeah. Oh, those are the best. Are they good? Those are still the best. Yeah. I can't have them. <laughs> I can't have them. But those are the best. And then uh, either uh, Swedish story. fish or gummy bears. Yeah. And just have them. And I would tell myself I would have the other. I would have two of each the next day, but it, it would never happen. Wow. So and I you miss, eat them all, huh? I miss that. Now I have. Now I have a fudgical, and it's depressing. But oh, it still tastes. Yeah. It still tastes good, but it's not. It covers the spread, yeah. but ain't what you really fucking want. That's the worst. Now, you grew up where? New uh, Louisiana. How far from New Orleans? A suburb? About 40 miles, yeah, 45 miles. So your family's eaters. Yeah, yeah, my family's like, we didn't eat a bunch of food, but we ate as much as we had, pretty much. Like, I mean, I've had three experiences in New Orleans. Yeah. And one outside of New Orleans. And all my experiences have always been around food. It's yeah. a very food culture. It's People love to eat. It's a foodie culture. And depending where the fuck you go, you know, they'll hit you with some alligator. Shrimp po' boys. Shrimp yeah. po' boys like a motherfucker, you know. Oh, they'll fucking When get... I went to shoot, uh, 
grudge match. We shot that in New mm-hmm. Orleans. But, you know, I was low man on the totem pole, and they put me in a hotel where they give you all the meals are inclusive. Yeah. And at first, I was like, I'm not going to fucking eat in no fucking hotel. Oh, my God. The hotel food was good. Every fucking meal was world class. And it was wow. all like a seven course. Like yeah. Start to finish, Jesus. salad, dessert, appetizer, you know, everything was fucking delicious. So it's a food culture. So, I mean, you're in great shape. You take care of yourself. Yeah, kind of. I mean, I like Do you to... eat what you want. I mean, you have a great metabolism. Not, you work out a lot. Not as much. I wish, yeah, I work out a pretty decent amount. I wish that I fucking started, I wish I actually ate more. And like, just like you would do, like you to just let, like sometimes I just want to honestly just fucking it's fill fun. myself with fucking food and salt and fucking It's fun sugar. for a little bit, but it's. I would give anything to be as skinny as you are. So it's, really, yeah, man, I've never been skinny. So this is like a new, a new thing for me. Oh wow, well, so your whole life's fucking feeling a little bit different on you. Yeah, I mean, I'm still, I'm still, I'm 228 today. So it's not, it's not great, but it's better than 315. You didn't look fat to me, man. I just thought, like, man, this guy, like, he's got kind of a unique shape, but he's chill. But then I was like, oh, and then if you feel fat, that's a bummer. I have, like, well, I don't, I don't feel any different at all. But it's like, I would imagine. I'm, I'm surprised you're not fat, like. Ben, like beignets? Are you serious? If I if I lived in New Orleans and had beignets and shrimp po' boys, fucking beignets. I've never even had one, but I just see it and it just looks. There used to be a place in Boulder. Baby formula too, actually down there. Baby formula. You see a lot of the sisters drinking baby formula outside of the French Quarter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you ever noticed. In a bottle? That. What do they do? Huh? In a bottle? No, no, no. Just a can, bro. They fucking it's just canning up. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it's true, man. A couple of sisters out there canning up. It's, uh, you know, it's weird you're talking about this. Because I think that, like, my best eating period, you know, you start off skinny. You right. work out in high school. You play football. You know, I had a friend that used to eat a box of fucking cereal for breakfast and an Entenmann's cake. <gasps> How the fuck did a gallon of milk, or whatever the fuck the milk is with the cereal. Was he driving truck? That's no, insane. No, he was in high school. And he oh, would lift crazy. weights and... And then, you know, I was eating, too. I had a great appetite. And then I, I moved to Colorado, and they, re, they took away the night eating. There's no more drinking and going to eat what I was used to eating, which right. was an open steak sandwich at 2 in the morning with a bowl of cream up. of turkey soup. And not even brushing your teeth. Shit, just going to bed with not dirty teeth fuck and yeah, shit. Son, that's how I do it. Fuck yeah, yeah, fucked up. So that's, yeah, that's where I'm from, man. And a place you go to bed with dirty you teeth. You get dirty teeth and, you, you know, you don't, uh, I, I don't eat here at night. I go home, if I'm really high, I'll eat whatever my wife cooked, which is controlled. It's like a chicken cutlet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like There's not like 20 chicken cutlets. <laughs> well, there's 20 chicken cutlets. You could fuck shit up. There'll be like one leftover chicken cutlet. <laughs> I'll eat a chicken cutlet, eat an apple. You know what I'm saying? Just to, it's yeah. crazy. I've been lucky all week. My mom has been here for almost a week. No and way. And I haven't eaten this good in four years. She's, she's been cooked. making breakfast? She hasn't made, we, we've, she's, we've been sleeping a little late. We have, she, a couple days she made breakfast, but it's been like, she made brisket, she made... Uh, a couple kinds of different kinds of chicken, ooh, and it just ooh, I like all of that. Stacked man. all my like my entire fridge is full now for like I the like next peach few weeks. cobbler. Oh, she made icebox cake. Have you ever had that? Uh-uh. All you do is you you take a layer of graham crackers and you have to get the the cook and serve pudding, not like pudding cups, but you have to cook pudding, and you just do layers of pudding and graham cracker. You put it in the fridge and let it f- freeze up, and then put some whipped cream on it. Mm-hmm. Oh, Paula's been talking about it for three days. She loves it. It's so good. We. But, Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, what were you saying? We used to fill fucking, we used to have this game where you would fill like people's, two dudes would fill their mouth with sugar, you know? And then <laughs> you would you you'd, you'd slap each other in the fucking cheeks. But here's the thing, bro. It, it's hard to hold a whole bunch of sugar in your mouth <laughs> and keep it all and keep it all in. Well, here's the thing. It starts dissolving, but you get parched because all your moisture is going into this thing. So your body starts to dry out. So then you start, you're, you're basically holding the sugar uh, in your dry mouth at a certain point, man. Oh, you feel like the Christ. desert. How old are you? I don't know. Like you was a child. Okay. Like when I was like eight. Like eight. Yeah. Like, yeah. Seven, eight, 11. And, and 14 boys, even. <laughs> 14 even. And this one 18 year old chick. Seven, eight, 11, 14. Uh, we used to have this fucking girl who was probably 14 that went shirtless, bro, since she was like fucking four. Four to fourteen shirtless, bro. 
shirtless. Dude. Why was that? I don't know. It was just her, their whole family was pretty much shirtless, and they didn't do any different by the girls, man. This girl was shirtless as fuck. And we all thought, like, damn, she's like a long hair. She's like the most best looking dude you ever seen, right? We thought that till about 11. And then somebody's like, that's a girl, man. She just goes shirtless. And we're like, fuck. and nobody told her to put a shirt on in school or something? <laughs> oh, I don't know about school. But uh, I never, I mean, she was in a children's school. I was a little bit older than her, but oh, I never saw anybody just be fuck. completely shirtless like that. There was Who like, puts fucking sugar in their mouth? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I can, if, well, it was a cheap game, bro. It's like if you don't have a bunch of money to go do something, you fill each other's mouth up with sugar, and then y'all just gotta slap each other in the cheek. There was a kid in my neighborhood, John Carney, not a bad kid, mm -hmm. always great sense of humor. But he had a brother, Brian Carney. In those days, kids didn't have ADD and they didn't have autism. You were just retarded. <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah. Whether you had the cheeky yeah. eyes or not. <laughs> yeah, you just wasn't you cutting were fucking, it. You just... <laughs> You just wasn't cutting it, man. And they used to torture him. Yeah, we called him God's favorite. Yeah, we they, called they used to make him drink piss. Like oh, they, they'd dang. piss in a beer bottle and close it and oh. then put it at the last bottle. He would take it, clap a beer, and he'd fucking drink it. And they, I was never involved dang, in this shit with funny. Brian Carney. But they, they was he handicapped? Some, no, he just wasn't sharp. You know, yeah. wasn't, He just wasn't a sharp kid. Nice kid, always said hello, Brian Carney. But they did weird things to him. Like, they used to make them eat shit. Like, they mm. pay them, like, 15 bucks to make them eat a lot of, like, weird stuff. How much shit? Fill oh, his, I mean, actual shit. No, 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 no. Like, fill his mouth with pepper and shit like that. <laughs> then they had this other kid. The kid, the guy who they just fired from the Miami Hurricanes, defensive coordinator. When he was a kid, his brothers and all those guys in the neighbor used to tie him up on a bicycle, make him eat raw eggs and blow them up in his mouth and all that shit. Like, put the eggs Ooh. in the shell and smack them and blow the egg in his mouth. No wonder that guy went to Penn State was an all-American tackle. Thank God I, didn't, I would have died in your town. There were certain Thank God, people who just I was too nerdy got, for that. I would have been know, one of those kids. The guy I got into it with when I did that club, before I met Lee, I did a club in New York City. One of the first times I went to New York to do comedy on my own, I booked a, a music club in the right, village. right. right. And I went there, and the guy that started a fight with me, his name was Brian Burns. And when we were kids, when you were in grammar school, you, he already had a legend. What he would do is he had a gang of guys that would take you, tie you down, and they would put duct tape on your balls and ooh, fucking ooh. that glue shit from the taping, and they would call it a table. Oh, and damn. They would give you a table where they'd lay you down and wrap you up with tape and yeah. pull the tape off you and shit like that. He was known for all that stuff, for spraying stuff on your balls. He was a big-time bully. And you know what happens to bullies, bro? They get beat up later on in life. People are gonna, and I remember that night, like I was like, I can take this fucking Damn. guy. Damn. And I had already a plan. He kept coming in to try to apologize. And I kept going, you know what? I could take this guy. I could kick him in the fucking knee. You could see he got to like 300 and something pounds. Right. He never stopped eating. Oh, so, but you felt like, so you, it was crazy because the tide had switched with that dude? Like, it, and back in the day. He, he was a bully. Yeah, he, he was, was a bully. Mean kid, you know. He was, uh, bro, when, when I was in eighth grade or, or seventh grade, he was already in high school t torturizing people. And they said, if you play football, be careful. Because if something happened during football practice that you hit him hard or something, he'd get his friends to give you the table. Oh, you know, especially if you were Spanish or something yeah. like that. Oh. You know? oh, that shit got racial, huh? It was what it was. Yeah. You know? I mean, it was what it fucking was. I mean, uh, we had one Mexican kid that showed up in our town. We didn't have any Spanish people. But we had one Mexican kid. Let me think about what this kid's name was. I think it was Nick, right? And uh, I remember we all had uh, science class. And, um, oh, actually, in science class, they had these hamsters you could play with until the second bell rang or whatever. Then you had to give, you know, put them in a cage and everybody could, then we would do learning, you know? <laughs> and <laughs> this fucking one time, they had this hamster, right? Superman, we named him. And, uh, and I was holding him in this fucking big sweatshirt I had, right? And after class, uh, I forgot he was in there. He fell asleep in the little pocket, right? Where you put your hands, right? So after class, I just throw him a book bag. I'm running. Next thing you know, I get in a fight with two brothers, right? Get beat up pretty good. And one of them had fucking killed this hamster that was still in this pouch. He fucking punched it. So I never had it, like... Sometimes I'll be caught fucking, I'm not even joking, bro. I'll have dreams where I feel like I had an abortion. <gasps> Poor Superman. I knew something wasn't going to be good. Yeah, I think that. his name was oh. Superman. Let me think for a second. It might not have been Superman. Why would you take the fucking hamster out of class and put <laughs> it in your fucking pocket for it anyway? No, no, because you, right. you were sitting in class. You just nothing to do. And it was nice to kind of have something more. Now, where'd bro. you go to high school? Mary? Uh, oh, not uh, Mary. Next to that a town, a couple away from there called uh, Covington, Mandeville. And where'd you go to college? I went to uh, LSU and uh, University of New Orleans. Really? Mm -hmm. Did you graduate from LSU? 
I graduated from University of New Orleans eventually. Look at you, you bad motherfucker. So when I made it to, through. When you went to LSU, they still talk about Pistol Pete Brown. Oh, dude, my ta- the town I grew up in. Get he, the fuck out of here. He lived and died in our town, dude. Get the fuck out of here. Yep, and Lee Harvey Oswald went to um, went to middle school in our in our in our town. Get the fuck out of Sk- here. Swear to God, dude. And I mean, I say this a lot, but in nineteen. Uh, and once in the 80s, then in 1994, a bunch of infected monkeys got out because Tulane University had their primate testing facility center in our town. And a bunch of infected monkeys got out, and they let us out of uh, YMCA summer camp to help the police look for them, bro. I remember they came to summer camp. What? And they basically they took sent the kids to look for them? Let me get that pen real quick. Not kids, dude. The too. tallest boys. They took the tallest boys right out, and, uh, and we helped them look for them. I remember surrounding a couple of chimps outside of a Kenny Rogers Roasters, dude, <laughs> off of Highway 190. That's a true story, oh, dude. That's the name of your book. Huh? I was surrounded some chimps and next to a Kenny Rogers oh. Roasters. And dude, the shit got racial. Like, people would go around town, they were like yelling. I mean, this is fucked up. I mean, this just shows you how far in the South you are. People would be like, 90 monkeys just escaped from this place or whatever. And you'd literally have, like, you know, people riding around with guns, fucking Confederate flags. It's like, dude, these are animals, man. Like, relax. Like, the shit almost got, it was weird. Like, people were like, these fucking monkeys. Like, they planned it. Like, it was crazy. Like, it was, it was I weird. just threw that name out because today, in today's paper on Twitter, it said that the basketball player from the Lakers is producing a Pistol Pete Maravich. Oh, that's bi- awesome. Biopic. And I'm sitting there going, you know, what kills me about today is they're doing biopics about people that these motherfuckers don't even know. That movie should have been done... Two years weeks ago. after he fucking died. Yeah. But nobody thought about doing it, you know? Do you know much about Pistol Pete? I mean, I think I know a pretty good amount about him. I mean, I know he played, you know, I know he played at LSU. I know he played uh, for the Jazz. Um, I know his two sons. Really? Yeah. They played ball, like, whenever I was growing up. So one of them, like, a little younger, one of them a little bit older. So, I mean, they were legends. It was kind of, you know, it was a small town. Like, it was Legends, like, legends. Yeah, the biggest name in his sure. fucking, his, If he lost, his father wouldn't let him sleep in the house and shit. Would make him sleep in the fucking yard. This is Southern basketball, Jack. Dude, they had a half court or a quarter court in their look, upstairs of their house above the... Look, look. In just, the attic. They had a basketball court. They didn't court. fuck around. The marriages didn't fuck around. That old man didn't fuck around. That dude drew. He had like... That's why he drank himself to death, Pistol Pete, because he there was no childhood. His father made him go out there and do wind sprints and shit. Yeah. And that guy wasn't fast, but his fucking handling skills were just phenomenal. He yeah, made it, up for it. In my life, I've seen two people handle a ball fucking phenomenally. One was a guy named Pistol Pete Maravich, who's an NBA player. And another guy was a kid from South Carolina. His name was Jackie Galoon. White kid or black kid? White kid. Hmm. And he played basketball on acid. That's why he didn't get drafted, because he was such a freak. But his handling skills, I saw him play, and I played against him when I got older. His handling skills were so fucking unbelievable, what he could do with a ball. And unless you see that, right. it's really hard to explain. Right. Even if you see Kobe Bryant pass or whoever, the, you know, Stephen Marbury pass, it was nothing or dribble or the control that Pistol Pete had for a white guy. It's and he had a tragic life. I don't think he ever won a championship. Uh, I don't think he ever won a championship. I know, like, I think he still has, like, the highest average per game for college. Right. Yeah, yeah, because he shot 90 times a fucking game. His father would, there was That's the coach the or something. His father would say, fuck those four guys. Yeah, literally. Shoot the fucking ball. Shoot the fuck those four motherfuckers. I heard he even tried to, sometimes he would wear a completely different jersey. Like, he would be on a team, and they'd have play on a team, and then he'd show up in a total different jersey and be like, I'm going to play both you guys. And they'd be like, you're out of your fucking mind. <laughs> It was Jesus. nuts, bro. But uh, yeah, man, we got out to look for all types of chimps that had gotten out of that uh, out of that joint. You know, you can still look for it online. They got some old stories about. You know, it's that. crazy because they had a lot of. Uh, I was going. Sorry. No, no. I grew up in New York City, but in my heart, after I saw different places, there was a couple places I wish I would have grown up. One would have been New Orleans. Yeah. The other would have been Houston. And there was one other place I wanted to grow up when I was a kid. I don't know why. New Orleans would I don't know why. I always thought New York would be really cool. You you follow me? Like, there's always places. Like, I'm very proud to be from Jersey. I love being from where I'm from. But it would be interesting. Like, when I go to New Orleans and I'm driving around, I always go, hmm, how would I have turned out if I would have grown up on this fucking street? Well, I don't know about you, but I I feel like the South gets a bad rap up north. But when I was driving, I drove across the country three times. 
I love the South. Everyone's, I love the, everyone's no. nice. Yeah. The, it's, it has nice weather. Like, I felt like I had got a bad rap where I was in Mass. People are fucking, I don't know, people are chill down there, man. But it's a lot of the same, like, you hear, you definitely notice it's a lot of old-fashioned ideas down there. Like, people, you know, the concepts are slow, you know. But that's what makes the South the South. Right. Listen, that's what makes the South the South. I read somewhere that last week when those guys, the terrorists, shot those people uh, that the neighbor said he suspected something, but he didn't want to call the police because he didn't want to seem racist. Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. Because he was it's too crazy. politically correct. You understand? We, we're at a point in our lives where we're too politically correct. Look what happened yesterday. Fucking Trump makes that announcement against Muslims. His fucking rating is the highest it's ever been. It's like 35%. He's 20 points ahead of the fucking competition. 19 points ahead of the competition. I like, uh, <laughs> you like Sleepy Black? What's that? I don't know. Ben that Carson? Is. Oh, Jesus. I can't vote, so I don't really know. What's oh, you can't going even on. vote. No, I got felonies, and I don't want to fucking vote. It's too much pressure. Then you got to be responsible for your fucking vote. I don't have that type of fucking conscience. So if you get a felony, you don't have to vote. Uh, you ten can't. years. Oh, that's For awesome. Ten years. I don't. I. You can't vote, and you yeah. can't have a fucking gun. That's what they. You know, that's the punishment they give you. Like yeah. really. <laughs> so I can't vote, and I can't have a fucking gun. I can see not having a gun. But what voting got to do with it? <laughs> I was disappointed, but after I thought about voting, I go, you know what? It's too much pressure. It's too much pressure. I don't know how people just vote and move on with their fucking mm -hmm. lives. Voting for me is like gambling. If I would have voted on fucking Obama, I would have been pissed off right now. <laughs> you follow me? You're in a corner at the fucking movie theater because you voted for fucking Obama. That's what they should do to people. Like, if you make a bad vote and you know you voted for them, take 50 people out of each neighborhood and throw stones at them, you dumb fucks. They're all liars. And drown I people. <sighs> drown them. I don't. I don't vote. I, can't, I. I got in a big fight with my mom and Paula when they were here. I. I. When there's no popular vote, I think it doesn't matter at all. Especially like where I grew up in Mass. There's no. If you vote for a Republican, you're throwing away your vote. Yeah. And then it just. It doesn't make sense that the popular vote isn't the way it elects people. And then even if it did, they all lie anyways. So I don't. I don't get the point. What would you do? You think you would dress like if you were a politician? You think feel like you? Sometimes I think about that. Like, would I fucking totally change the game and wear like you know like a wife beater or some crazy <laughs> boots or something? You know, like if you were like sometimes I think like you know say if you was a governor or something, you'd be like I'm gonna wear these crazy boots, you know, or I'm gonna <laughs> wear like a you know a fucking dope jacket. If I was a voting American, <clears throat> if I was a voting American, if I really was a voting American. You know, I wouldn't give a fuck about abortion. I, that, that's got nothing to do with the price eggs. I want to yeah. know what you're going to do. The, the country's in this state of the country right now. What yeah. are you going to do to get us out of this state? Let's go step by step for your two terms. Let's go for the eight years. Yeah. Give me the eight years. How it's going to pan out. What are you going to do the first year? What are you going to take care of? What's second on the agenda? What's third? Yeah. Do I give agenda. a fuck about the homeless problem? Not fucking mm -mm. really. I, there's a ton of fucking problems you got to take in before we worry about the minute little things. Agreed. Homeless people want to be fucking homeless people. What do you want me to do? A lot of them are doing fine. A lot of them are doing fine. You see them over here at the end of 134 getting changed, then they walk over to their fucking <laughs> Corvette. I'm yeah. driving a fucking Subaru, hustling like a fucking savage, taking two planes a fucking week. <laughs> and these cocksuckers are getting changed, making 40 grand a year at the end of the 134. <laughs> you know, I listen, man, I, I, it's, not the, it's not the point I'm talking about, but that's I want to know your plan. I want to yeah. know your plan step by step by step by step, how it applies to me as an American. I want you to plan it out for fucking people who make $50,000 yeah. or less. I want you to tell yeah, them. Yeah, real that. people. Real people. Yeah. You know, and now you were talking about the South and that they're slower and that all that shit. You know what? I like that. Yeah. I like that that's there and the reason why it's there. There's a reason why a white guy would say that he's going to stop Muslims from coming in right now. And people raise their hand. There's half of them that say, oh, it, we, it's cruel or whatever. But the other half are Americans that feel, you know, we got to stop this somewhere. Oh, yeah, man. I we think have, you got to shut it down, bro. I would say if they had walls and you could press a button right now, I'd put them up everywhere. But it's not just, it's not just that. It's, you know, look at the fucking, uh, the, the people, the white dude. You know, it's people who shot up the movie theater. Let's not just blame one fucking yeah, show. No, 100%. Here. We got to find out I'm who's not, in there. I just want to know who our neighbors are. We all got to figure this shit out. Who's yeah, here, Listen, bro? man, Pete, you said it best yourself. They're building buildings and people moving in and out. They just said that these people have a fucking 
passport duplication. Yeah, that's if you crazy. don't think they're here, if you don't think you're they're making with billions them, on oil, they have everything. It's just, and I don't know how, what, because what are they going to do? They're going to walk, are they going to go around now here, bro. knocking on your neighbor's doors? Like, hey, we're going to check all the Muslims out. Well, you can't. Not, just, not even Muslims, but even just regular people, you know? <laughs> I don't really, I don't pay too much attention. If Trump hadn't said the things he said about Hispanics and the stuff about the Muslims, I think a lot more people would be on board. Yeah. I, and I actually read an article yesterday that they're they're predicting that Trump is going to bow out at the end, just like he did the last time. So maybe he, maybe he doesn't want too much support. I don't know. Right. But it's just it's it's crazy what people say. And then and then yeah, if you lay out a plan, right? What happens when they don't do any of what they said? Yeah. Like I I voted the first time for Obama, and he said like the whole thing like a hundred a hundred days I'll close Guantanamo. That was like the first thing he said. And it's coming up on the end, and that's nowhere near being closed. But maybe he didn't know that he couldn't close it. I don't know. But how do you keep? How do you hold them accountable? You can't. It's crazy. It's just like. No, let me ask you something. Just for the yeah, sake of argument here, because I don't know nothing about nothing. I'm a little high there. Are I you guys still? I'm I very am high. Ignorant. Okay, I'm just making sure everybody's high. Man. Why was it important to you that they would close Guantanamo? No, Why is that such? No, a, no, that no I'm no, not arguing with you. Right. I'm just no, want to know. Personally, that I, I have no. Thoughts on that, but that was just the only thing I could think of right now. I'm, right. I'm, like that was he said in the hundred days, I'll close, I'll close it. I don't, I don't know who if that's good or bad. I'm not. Now that people want them to close Guantanamo, yeah. Why? Because it, it's the, it's the like they're not giving them like fair trials. They're just keeping them there. I did comedy there once. Did you? For yeah, <laughs> for the troops there. You're not the prisoners, but um, it was it was pretty it was pretty fun. I guess. I mean, I don't know. Not for the. I mean. It's chill in there. The chicks only had like seven chicks, not even that hot, but uh, some of the guys seemed friendly, and we went swimming and everything. We had a good time. We had a good time. Now, what made you want to get on stage? Um, my dad was real old when I was born. That's all. I was how old was you? Seventy. Dad? My dad was seventy. Hold on, hold on one second. I gotta go get a tissue. You Tony, shit? Tony Bennett. Oh, that's only shit a little. Man. No, 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 no. I just got to go blow my nose. But yeah, I wonder what kind of hats I would wear, or special pants I would wear if I was a president, bro. You ever wonder that, man? Like American I flag pants? Be yeah. To yeah, like a little, you know. Pick up the pieces when somebody breaks huh? your heart. How's, this, how's the podcast going? I'm so it's going good. It's going, it's, it's on right now. Huh? I guess, we, no. I mean, we can Do talk. We stream? Yeah, we're streaming right now on YouTube. That's so. Your dad was seventy years old. Yeah. That's. That's crazy. How was that? How was it? Like, um, was it? Was it? It was pretty nuts, bro. So wait, who's high? You're high. I'm very high. Okay. Oh Joey's high. Oh yeah, Joey. I'm high. I think most of the people listening. Do I seem high. super high? You think? No, I thought it was funny when you said like going to do learning. I think that was. Oh funny. yeah, man! I get caught up with sounding like a fucking. Retard sometimes. I'm pretty I'm pretty high though. Like if I think I'm trying to think like say if somebody like say if I wasn't myself and I came up to me. Okay. And I said <laughs> Fuck that doesn't even make any sense. And I said Hi. Fuck, what were we talking about? What, like, what were we talking about? Yeah, no, it's sometimes I wonder that like if I was sober watching a high yeah. person, would I be able to know they were high? Dude, I wonder if you came up to yourself, bro, would you even like who you are? Would you be like, look at this bitch right here? Oh, that's deeper than I was thinking. That's sometimes I think I try to be. No, what, you Joe, what do you think? Me? Would you like yourself honestly if you met yourself, dude, being a hundred percent and it's hundred percent honest? No, I don't even like look. At, I hate when I do a movie and I have to go watch it, or somebody makes me. I'm dreading watching this fucking special. You know, I'm dreading all that shit. I don't want to see me. I don't want to fucking hear me. I don't want to see my body. I don't want to see my physique. When is it? When is it special? Uh, no, we just cut. We just shot something in Vegas. Oh, y'all did? Uh, so, How was yeah. it? Awesome? It was what it was. You know, I got to see it. it you know, I just went through the motions. I, get, I don't fucking know. It's good. I'm really I'm too high it. right now. Bro, know, it's, it's good. Too, it's good. Quick? Oh, is that I hope you? not. No, I, thought, I hope uh, it is. So um, your dad had you when you were 70. <laughs> yeah, he was old. When he How, was you, How old was your mom? 32. She, she was young. 
Your dad was swinging some dick. He was throwing it out there, man. No, that was his first marriage? No. No, he'd been married a couple of, He'd been married one time before. Is maybe. Your dad still alive before we talk about no, it? No, he'd be old. I'm sorry. It's all right. Appreciate it, man. He'd, uh, he would be almost, uh, he'd be 106. 106 I'm sorry, now. I'm sorry. I don't know. You look, Thanks, are you looking at 22, so I'm all fuck. fucked up. I know oh, you've been yeah. around here for 10 years, maybe. So I'm he 35. had you when you were 70. Yeah. He got old, man. He just, uh, I don't know. And that's when my mom will, like, when I think about my mom, like, who would bang, like, a, an old guy? Like, that would be crazy, I feel like. What, was he, like, an attractive man? Was he, like... He, yeah, definitely handsome, but, he, I mean, he didn't have any money. You know what I'm saying? Like, who kind of thugs it out with an old dude that many times? Let me get back to the... You know? How old was your dad when he passed? 86. So he was around until you were 16. God bless you, bro. Yeah. You got to have him until you were 16. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, man, it was so it was it was kind of wild having like an old dad because all the time you spent it was just like a little bunch of like kind of vignettes of like like he would take me to this bar sometimes with him, bro, and you know the lady would give me fucking chocolates, right? And then uh, I mean one night the lady, I'm not even joking, kept giving me chocolates, and my dad's like, no, no, no more chocolates for me, you know he and I'd had th- probably thirty, bro, like you nothing could stop me from eating chocolates, bro. I'd just continue to put chocolates if they had chocolates around me, I would just continue to put them into me. And this lady, my dad said, no, no, no. And then the lady took me to the side of the bar a little while later and just gave me fucking tongue. Like, almost like this lady wanted to, like, poison me or something, you know? So he used to take me to do, like, weird shit like that. Uh, I don't know. God bless you, bro. No, 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 no. You fucking know. You fucking know. I lost my father when I was three. I lost my mother when I was 16. So I... I, That's crazy. Yeah, so you know some of the... But right now I had my daughter when I'm 49. Every morning I wake up, I can't lie to none of you guys. I wake up, I put my feet down, I go, God, thank you for giving me another day to see this little fucking girl. All I want is enough time just so I can give her the fucking mentality of the church. That's all I need. and Let her work it out like I worked it out without my mom. That's right. the best way to fucking do because I feel like I'm going to die. No. I did blow. No, I you're ass. not going to die, man. You know, God fucking knows. You get shot by one of these fucking monkeys. Who knows? Yeah. But you always... Uh, you always, uh, you know, I always, uh, it's amazing that now, like, I would say, who the fuck would have a kid at 50? Yeah. Don Johnson had a kid at 52, and I did a movie with him. I'm looking at him going, why would you have a fucking kid? Yeah. That's the most selfish fucking thing in the world. And also, I knocked my wife up. So now you're looking to live. Like, you're like, wait a second, you know, I want to live for this child. Right. But fucking 70, your dad had balls of steel. Brothers and sisters? Yeah, I got two younger sisters and an older brother. So same we got mom four. and dad. Same mom and dad, yeah. See, oh shit, so you got two younger sisters. Yeah, man. We had a wild it was yeah, man, it was pretty wild. I mean, I guess I'm trying to think like more about what it was like. Like I remember like weird shit, I guess. I mean, I don't know do uh, uh, I'm fucking high, man. Um so <laughs> I remember like my dad would fucking he let me drop like say as soon as I was tall enough, like 11 years old, I remember being 11 years old and my dad being like, uh, hey, will you drive me? You know, because he couldn't turn his neck, you know? So, like, he's like, hey, will you drive me? And I'm like, yeah, I'll fucking drive you. I'll, I'll hit like 5'10, a little growth spurt when I was 11. So, next thing you know, I was driving my dad places, dude. Like, I remember we dropped him at the post office and he said, go around the block. And uh, <laughs> I went around the block and fucking hit like seven cars, bro. <laughs> just fucking sided. And my dad had a cutlass, like a Delta 88, you know, like a just straight up fucking rig rider, bro. And um, and he, I was just, and it was a piece of shit. It was all banged up. And I would just go around the block. And then one time he let me drive him on the interstate. Uh, I was doing like 70, 80 miles an hour driving to Hammond. And it's probably about like 30 miles. And my dad's just fast asleep in the fucking passenger side, son. So those are the fucking good old days, man. What what I, I feel from you a little bit, like when you tell me the stories, you're happy, you miss them and everything. But are these stories weird to tell sometimes? Like, are they weird to tell? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's, just, not, it's not the normal American family. Like me, I right. have the same family. Right. So I could see that we both share that same little twitch because as you get older, you'll appreciate those stories more because nobody fucking had a life like that. When right. Dad, when you're 11, your dad's like, Drive the fucking car. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's cool as We were all shit. begging to drive the car. You're begging to drive the fucking <laughs> yeah, car at yeah. that age. That's a good point, And it's point, a small man. city. Right. You know, cops knew each other. You would have got pulled over. It's oh, it was like, chill. Know, 30 fucking years in those days. You yeah. Know? But just the fact that sometimes when your parents give you a lot of trust, it does something to you. It's good and it's bad. Right. You know, like you had an older dad that he saw life for what it was at 70. And I bet now when you tell those stories sometimes, you're like, ah, should I even say the story? Let me tell you something, Theo Vaughn. 
You have no idea how lucky you are. You have no, how, you have no idea that you had this life because most kids can't even imagine that shit. Right. Most kids have to steal a car at 16. You know, it, it, this so many good points of growing up, no matter how you grow up, as long as your parents were around. Right. Just having a life is great. I know it's tough. People get adopted and they get stabbed and they get beat up and shit. <laughs> You know, I'm very lucky when my parents... Thugs and Muppets, man. Yeah, when my mom died, I didn't have to go into the system. You know, I was old enough to make my own decision. It's so weird. Till today, I realized I didn't even do paperwork. When my mom died, my friend said, you want to live with us? I'm like, yeah. That was it. I kept going to high school. Like, nothing. I just switched my address. And yeah, nobody it. asked any questions. Who's your legal guardian? Me. <laughs> yeah. That was my legal fucking guardian. Me. <laughs> Those are the fucking days, dude. I feel, like, I feel like kids can't have anything like that anymore. Like, all the... Uh, I don't know. It was just this ambiance. Um, I think before some of the technology we have now that just made everything fucking dope. And one of the reasons why I wanted to go home with my wife and the baby was because of my paranoia of dying. I wanted to walk my daughter up and down the same streets I walked. Right. So I parked the car, I walked up, given that terrace, I walked down Union Turnpike. But the best walk we did was in the park where he used to play basketball. Yeah. It was open. I took her in the park. And now they replaced the hut. There used to be a hut in there. And one of the most racist things I ever heard come out of a person's mouth was in that fucking hut that me and everybody in the park looked at each other and just kept fucking shaking our heads. Damn. There used to be a hut there, and the guy's uh -huh. name was Mr. Kennel. Uh -huh. His two sons are still alive, or the one son's still alive. Nice kid. I always liked Jackie's his name. <clears throat> this has to be 1975. Uh -huh. <clears throat> we're in this park, and we're just playing tag, whatever the fuck you play when you're 11 or 12. Mm -hmm. There was a basketball court, but in those days, we weren't allowed in the basketball court. The older kids were drunk. And unless they picked you, you couldn't fucking. So we just played, whatever, in the monkey bars and shit. Chill. And that hut was there, and it was the summertime. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget that Mr. Kennel was in that hut. And there was, you know. He was coming in there? No, he was sitting in there with a fan on him in this little hut, and the window was slide open. And he's sitting there, he's got his glasses on. Mr. Kennel's got to be 40. Right. And there's eight Spanish kids, 20 Italian kids, uh -uh. you know, six Irish kids. And one fat black girl. Blowing with a, him? With a huge, no, no. With a huge Julius Irving afro. She's a little kid. Right. She's got to be tiny. She's just, oh. she's throwing rocks at the kids. They're all throwing rocks at each other. <laughs> They're all having a good time. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, one of the white kids spits at Marlo. And Marlo spits back at the white kid. Uh -huh. And Mr. Kennel sees this. Now, we're over here. Uh -huh. I don't know what the fuck we're doing. He sees this, and he slides open the window, and he pops his head on the window and goes, hey, don't let that nigga spit get on you. <laughs> right? This is 1975. He goes, that shit will go right through you, and he closed the window. <laughs> and me and the other kids sat there and looked at each other like we had never heard. Like, I heard nigga on a Richard Pryor album. Yeah. Like, that was it. Yeah. For him to yell it, that was the most rate. And Marlo just kept spitting at the white kid like nothing happened. <laughs> Marlo didn't give a fuck. <laughs> Damn, man. Ah, uh, that is fucked great. up. Well, that man. hut is gone. Yeah. My point is, <laughs> the hut and its racism is gone, right? They um, had this uh, kid that lived down the street from us named Boogie. And uh, the dad was like a bus driver in our town. And, um, and he used to cut our hair, right? And uh, <laughs> he's a bus driver that cut hair? <laughs> yeah, he was. He was a bus driver that cut hair. And here's the crazy part. I didn't even think about this. The only haircut he knew how to give was his own cut, right? Like the whole, like the style he had, right? And it was, it was a fucking. It wasn't even a style. It just looked like shit, right? So all the boys and most of the girls had the same cut in our town, man. Everybody looked jacked up. But what were we talking about? Black people? Oh no, no, no. 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 Uh the the priest yelled that shit, man. The first time I really wanted to go to New Orleans was when I read about fucking the mafia down there mm -hmm. and how that guy ran the mob and how everybody thought that that whole Kelly assassination came out of New Orleans. It was also very interesting to me. Then I saw a movie called with Richard Gere and mm -hmm. Kim Bassinger. Fatal Attraction? No. 
fatal fucking attraction. That's that, the chick that shows a pussy. Oh, that's my, uh, I knew it is Sharon Stone. Right. This is what uh, if Sigourney Weaver showed her pussy? Would you look or not? Fuck yeah, with that over. Oh, actually, I love that sexy. Over. No mercy. No mercy was a movie that came out in 1987 about white. 86 about white motherfuckers Ooh. killing each other in New Orleans. And the guy that was her boyfriend bought her. Mm -hmm. Bought her. Like that happens yeah. in New Orleans. He bought her from her mama. Right. He raised and they pulled a Woody Allen and fucked her. She was beautiful. Kim Bassinger. You imagine buying Kim Bassinger when she's like 13? Oh, and cheaper just, then. And just feeding her, <laughs> That's a and crazy just feeding her steaks and fucking fattening her up. When she's 18, <laughs> you give her a stab and you marry her. She don't know no different. You hide her from the world. What time is it? I have no fucking idea. It's been 1982 for days. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't ask. Do you think we all come from incest? Really? When you really think about it, uh, like, well, we I'm have from to. a fucking island. Oh, then you have to have probably have. There's incest. I know for a fact that my grandmother and my grandfather, like third cousins or something like that. So there's got to yeah. be. I'm retarded from bloodstream. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Something along. I know something happened. My uncle told me for the first time. He said someone wasn't right? No, he told me. He goes, you know that your great-grandmother and your great-grandfather were like third fucking cousins or yeah. something. That's why the maiden name is kind of weird. It's Valdez Malbares or some shit. They just dropped the Malbares or some shit. So it's an island. When you, you come from a fucking island, you, there's got to be incest somewhere along the line. I don't think I'd ever do incest, man, even if I think I had the hottest, hottest fam family member. Ever, bro. Ever. Think about that, though, dude. What about, Say if what every about cousin. Listen, what, I don't what, want to talk about incest on the church, though. Okay, we my got, bad. My, we got fucking boundaries here. We can't right, be talking right, about right. incest. Uh, I had a right. cousin I wanted to fuck, too, as a kid. <laughs> okay, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie to nobody. I, I ain't gonna just, bullshit nobody. I thought you just said we couldn't talk about it. <laughs> when I was a kid, yeah, I, I had it. sex with, like, Puerto Rican cousins. That oh, means, like, that's your, crazy. Like, your families grew up together, but you're not really blood. And they're like, you guys are cousins. Or some families encourage it. You guys should hook up. It would be a nice wedding. They, and I had sex with a little girl. That, 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 that. She wasn't a little girl. She had hair. I didn't. Wow. First wow. time, Evie. Evie was her name. And she was older than me by a year. And I used to sleep over. And one day she goes, look at it. And I looked at it. I almost fucking died. Really? I had hair on it. I sniffed it. Dang, you got down there, huh? Young fella. No, really. I didn't eat it. I just sniffed it, I think. And right. I fucking ran away. Yeah, that first smell is pretty strong. A real, uh, I don't remember. Why well, you gotta talk about smells for it's Monday <laughs> night? I don't know. My bad. Is it Monday? It's fucking Thursday. What is it? Lisa, it's yeah. Thursday, Thursday, dude. Lisa's gotta go back to his house, stone to the gills. <laughs> I hope to God my mom's asleep. <laughs> Why? She's not going to because the, look how high I am. Because you told nah, you'll her. probably be fine, man. You should bring her half a joint, Lee, and just tell her how it's gonna go down tonight. Yeah, why don't you fucking do some crab my god? Yeah, You're fucking wicked because if not, you're gonna argue with her anyway. Just yeah. Bring, no, she knows. Bring home a half a bone, light that savage right in the living room. Yeah. No, as I, as I was leaving, she was like, do you want me to freeze the food? Because she made on me a whole bunch of food. Wow. And I was like, hey, you know what? Everything we had tonight, just leave it out because I'm going to want to eat that when I get home. And she's like, the whole like the whole breast? I was like, yeah, the whole another breast. Damn. So, I, uh, I'm i trying to think of what I was going to say, man. What were we talking about? What made you jump on a fucking stage? What made you jump on a stage the first time? Oh, uh, yeah. Fuck? I don't know, man. I just thought, I guess, <clears throat> tell, making people laugh was just the funniest. Th that was the best thing. Like, if people weren't laughing, I was like, what the fuck are we doing? We're just doing all this other shit. And then we wait for, and then rarely somebody says something funny and we laugh. Like, why don't we do a little bit of the inverse, you know? Like, we do all this other shit. The best part is when somebody's laughing. Was so. your dad funny? He was pretty funny, man. Uh, Where was he from? He was from uh, Nicaragua. Nicaragua. No wonder. I'm he Polish Nicaraguan. Oh, Jesus Christ. No wonder he was slinging dick at 70. You yeah. should have made... When I thought he was a white dude, mm -hmm. I was like, okay. Yeah. He's a crazy... I thought he was like somebody from, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like one of those guys from the South. Oh, like, yeah. Get over here. I'm going to fuck you right <laughs> now. I don't give a fuck to get dirty, too. <laughs> a lot of reptile, a little but reptilian. Now you, now you listen, Filipinos and those Spanish dudes. They got sperm eggs in that nutsack oh, yeah. to their fucking 90. I swear to God. Sperm Some, eggs. Oh, they'll they start a kid like a magician. Yeah, like just, old, dog, those fucking old spicks and those fucking twins. Filipinos. Janice, my my yeah. daughter's godmother, Yeah. her father had a kid at 74. Yeah. 
Why do you just pull out? Bro, they... 40-year-old woman. Oh 70 God. fucking Dude, four. they could do semen into a pond, and it would start up at some point, man. They are so... But then I watched that movie with Alec Baldwin and the young chick. Yeah. And he was at a fertility clinic with a bunch of other fucking dudes that are like 50, <sighs> all dating 20-year-olds. What is that? It's, uh... it's complicated. Yeah. Yeah, man. I remember... Oh, Puerto Ricans you were talking. That They used to say, uh, that's when... Did you guys... Oh, I was talking about the first Mexican kid we had in our town, right? So we had class with the hamsters, right? Going yeah. back to that, right? That the, <laughs> that man, Mister Bl- Mister Blackwell's class. We had the hamsters. They let you keep the hamsters after Superman got killed. No, no, no. That was yeah. I just mean it was that same time, right? And everybody would get a different pet, and uh, we used to play this game where you would like somebody would lay down and you would put a snake on their back or a fake snake on their back, right? And you would play guess if I have a snake on my back or not, right? <laughs> and people would literally bet. Uh, if they did or what they were going to guess. And then sometimes we would put this game where you, because they had this one rabbit in there that was always falling asleep. It was like almost, hey, you know, like a whatever rabbit narcolepsy kind of is, you know, where he just drifts off, you know, because it's a rabbit. They're not doing much, you know. And you would set a rabbit on a pile of money and you try to pull the dollars out from under him and, uh, and without waking him up. That was like the biggest uh, thing we used to do in class before class. But the problem, but the, not the problem, but the thing that happened was this Mexican kid moved in named Nick, right? And the first thing he ever said in class, the man was, uh, in science, they also taught you sex ed, right? So, like the first day this kid, Nick, was in there, it was during the sex ed part. And he stands up and he goes, uh, what is, <laughs> he goes, what does pop that cherry mean? That's what he said. <laughs> He asked the fucking teacher like as serious as could be like, who does pop that cherry mean? And then he uh he ended up banging some girl like in sixth grade, right? And uh and she broke up with him, broke his heart, and he he started to like rap music and he wore this t-shirt that said Nick the rapper that he wrote on it with a marker, right? But he only put one P in it and it said Nick the Raper on it, the fucking shirt that he wore. And they fucking expelled him. They expelled him. That's racism. Uh, I guess he was Mexican. But see, Mexican didn't play a part in it. He was a bad speller, and he fucking was asking stupid questions. What does pop that cherry mean? Pop that cherry. Remember that saying? You don't hear that anymore, dude. You never hear that. Never hear that shit. God, I bet her cherry's been popped. Yeah. You could tell if you look at her. Watch how she walks. Watch I never she... I never popped anyone's cherry. You, you didn't? Did? No. Nope. You still out there, though, man. You married? No, nah, almost. Nah, you're not, bro. You'll get a little bit of fucking trim that's fucking <laughs> never been anywhere. I don't know. That's a lot of pressure. Dude, I'll tell that's you this. That's more pressure than voting. Buddy of mine, okay? First time my buddy got some trim, right? Uh, we were at this dance, and my buddy ended up you know, touching this gal's vagina after the deal, after the dance. And we uh, all were sitting around this fire at his, at his house later. And uh, so he's like, you know, telling everybody what happened. And my buddy's dad came out, right, and heard it and kept smelling my buddy's fingers. Then while we're standing out by the fire, dude, <laughs> for probably like 40 minutes. <laughs> Is that fucking nuts? How man? terrible would that be? If yeah. You yeah. Oh, you'd be rubbing your pants. What would you do? <laughs> Gnarly, right? And then the same night, bro, I was sleeping in this guy's room, and he had a bunch of pets stacked up along the walls because he loved all kinds of pets. And there was five of us sharing a bed, right? And um, and <laughs> all night, bro, I can't sleep, right? Because I'm, sca- I'm scared of all these Jesus animals, Christ. bro. I'm scared of all these animals, bro. And I can't sleep, right? And so uh, I'm just thankful that this one, <laughs> this dog keeps barking, man. I'm so high. That this dog, I'm just thankful that this dog outside the window keeps barking all night because I'm awake. I can't sleep, right? All the other four kids in his bed are asleep. And you can just hear these pets moving in their cages. And he had a big ceiling fan in the middle of the room that was spinning, right? So it's like whirling up all these pets, that's right? Terrible. And even though we can sleep, is keeping them awake because you got to think a ceiling fan for a pet, that's got to be like, you know, a fucking tornado going off constantly, right? We don't think about that, you know? So I'm fucking laying in the bed. Thankfully, this dog barks every now and then. It keeps me company, right, even though it's outside. And then you hear boom, 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 boom. My buddy's dad walked out there, killed the dog right outside the fucking window. Boom! Went back to sleep, dude. Same dude that hours earlier had been smelling a young man's hand, man. Same man. And that's what blew my mind about the world. Like, how could at one moment a guy be so gentle? That dude's a monster. And then, yeah. And then seven hours later be blowing a freaking animal's head open because it was barking. 
You know, you have an animal in the woods, bro. It's going to bark. You know how much woods is out there? You know, he probably hears everything. They said they can hear everything. Imagine hearing six times something. You'd fucking be angry, you know, your neighbor, you know, four houses over. I don't know, man. I'm high, bro. First you talk about incest, and you got to talk about killing dogs. So you got to bring me down. Sorry, man. I'm bringing you down. I haven't been that down since fucking... Oh, dog. I'm sorry. Since Lee told me his girlfriend don't do laundry. Oh, damn. <laughs> I haven't been that fucking depressed. What? How are you going to get the laundry <laughs> done, dude? She doesn't live with me. Why would you do my laundry? I do my, I did my laundry. I didn't bring it to the thing. Bro, it's, if you're really in love with her, you should fucking leave a load over there. When you go back two days later, see if it's cleaned or her not. Her mom would That's do it. That's if it's love. No, but the thing is, she still lives with her mom. Her mom would do it. Oh, wow. Her mom has offered. Fuck yeah. Bring it over there. Fold the these Put starch on them. Is her mom married to a brother or not? Have you ever no. had fun? <laughs> She's Mexican. <laughs> Have you ever had Who's starch Arthur, in the other way? Uh, starch in my underwear? Yeah. No, that's oh, not, that oh, sounds wow. terrible. Why would you want to starch? Fucking tremendous. Make you feel like an adult. Yeah, soft. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Makes you feel like you have a checkbook, you know? It makes you fucking feel good. <laughs> that's what I miss, bro. Look at fucking Lee. You got to go into the house now. How are you going to act? Nick the Raper. Good. <laughs> Nick the Rapper and shit. <laughs> oh, my God. So what was the first place you got on stage? Uh, this place called Brown. Uh, this place called Brown in uh, down in Louisiana. There's a bar down there, and then I went on this thing called Semester at Sea, which was like a university, like a floating school that goes like you literally circumnavigate the globe. And I was in college, and they had uh, they had an open mic on there, and they they had a senior passenger on our cruise ship that had died, right? So they was keeping him in the freezer, right? So I just made some jokes about you know like different like you know cold cuts and shit. You know, like this sandwich tastes like berry, you know. And just vague shit like that. And kids, you know, kids were kind of laughing. And so then I got up, uh, and they had like an open mic thing on there. And I got up on there. And it was pretty, it was fun, you know? Joking For a nice that. looking kid, you're a dark dude. And I like that about you. On stage, you're, you take people in a weird direction. And I look at you and I go, this fucking kid, you know, I trust him with my fucking animals. Thanks, man. Well, and not also, that you're one, shooting though. shooting fucking dogs and you fucking incest. Well, a couple of brothers beat that animal up. I never did that, Super uh, Superman. I never did that. That was, just, you know, to be honest, a couple of brothers. I did. killed a fucking rat a couple times. Yeah, I actually backed over a deer once with a fucking lawnmower, if we're really going to share Gosh. stories. I swear to God, man, it was a big bush hog. And I used to work on this farm in the summer times, right? And <laughs> this man let me cut the grass with a huge bush hog. So one day I'm just cutting and I backed around to turn it around and a fucking... Deer, man, ran over a deer with it. Actually, ended up killing a deer. Oh, Damn, it's just dark. A, a deer jumped at my car once. There you go. You, you killed it? it? Didn't, no, it ran away. You probably killed it, though. No. Did you hit it? Yeah, but I was, going, on, like 20 damn, dude. I was going 20 miles an hour. You hit it, and that's 20 miles an hour, talking how fast that is. Well, yeah, that's true. Look, I had a dog in Wilshire. Oh, no. Ooh. Ten years ago, coming home, not stoned, minding my own business. Wow. Doing the speed limit. You know, you're on fucking Wilshire Boulevard. Yeah. You know, no, I wasn't even on Wilshire. I was on that block that you cut from Olympic all the way up to Sunset. On, but, uh, on the other Vermont. Side, Vermont, one of those. On Veteran. That deep one, and all of a sudden, fucking a dog. He, I didn't hit him straight up. He, he ran into my car. And Damn. he bounced off my car and got in more shock. And he was limping, and cars were going around him. And I pulled over, and I tried to get him, but he, he ran. That motherfucker. Once you hit him, they fucking run. Yeah, dog. they run forever. And you feel terrible. I mean, you feel fucking horrible. Whether it's a squirrel or whatever, you feel fucking terrible. Yeah. You know, but but on a happy note, accidents happen. I had a great time looking at your cats. I had a great time watching your cats. I know you week. did. Thank you very that much. It was so much fun. My cats are good fucking animals, man. Yeah, I, I never I, had I, a cat, man. Really, you had dogs? I'm ready. Yeah, you're ready. No. We didn't have a dog, but I'm thinking about getting a dog. I've been thinking about it. I'm still considering it. If I didn't have as many allergies as I do, I'd get cats. Because like it was funny, like they have like little setups. Like Roy would sit right at the edge of your kitchen and wait for somebody, and like attack him. I was like, "Hey, bye!" Hilarious, <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. Like I would pause the TV and just start watching him. And Dimmy runs into her castle, yeah. so Dimmy will go fuck with somebody else. Somebody else will swat him. He'll give him a look and go, fuck you. And also, he'll walk right into Gray. And Gray will hit him with three quick rights to the head. And he'll go, fuck you, dirty bitch. And then he'll go in the kitchen like, no, nope. shit, these bitches are crazy. And shit. It's a show to watch animals, whether they're dogs or cats, especially at night when you have one or two or three of them. They, they, and Gray went crazy for the ham. She wouldn't stop me. I, I told like, you. They yeah. should have a cat. Like, uh, Do they have like a streaming cat channel where you can just watch cats whenever you want? We should get you. Oh, that's what we should do. 
Yeah. She get like you like an iPad and per- like put it up and like periscope the cats. Yeah. That's what I want to do. You should start a cat town, dude, and dress them up like different fucking uh, nah, ethnicities. Nah. So when they show up and interact, you could like, it's almost like a game of Risk. I don't like when people dress up their fucking dogs and shit. Yeah. I don't know why they it's do a that. huge Jeez. industry. There's no dog that wants to have a fucking tuxedo on. Oh, they had a kid uh, in our town, and this is no correlation, but that had really bad, like, kind of, I don't think it was Down syndrome, but something pretty close. And his mom would dress him up constantly. Like, dress him up like. Oh, God. Like, you know, like, almost like costumes all the time. Like, he's in a pirate costume, like, this week. Like, his mom, like, he was, like, like it was always Halloween or something for him, you know? You're a crazy young man. That's what I love about you. you uh, give some shout-outs? He's like, yeah, he's a panther, you know? <laughs> I want to give a shout-out. Happy anniversary to Tina and Jimmy Joe, Aiden Diaz, Jesse Bryant, Peter Mandy Barr, Jim Jorgensen, Paul Lynch, Jack Bratcher, what's happening, you bad MMA motherfucker? And my man, Henry Solari, you better show up to class this week, cocksucker. And Dustin Zawacki just had a baby. Dustin Zawacki had a baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of fucking things going on in the church fucking world. Good energy. Oh, and one, and one quick thing. Steve Simone is doing a uh, GoFundMe. Uh, did you hear about that? I heard that. Something like that. He's doing... He yeah, There's a bunch of great... Uh, He's doing great things for a couple families and kids and wants to do more for people at Children's Hospital in L.A. Uh, so Bill Burr retweeted it, and I'll tweet it tonight. It just, it, he's uh, giving some kids who have some pretty terrible diseases like some happy times during the holidays. That's awesome. Steve Simone's a good fucking dude. Great heart, man. He's over there giving blood, bringing sandwiches. <laughs> oh. He plays with the kids. And hey, listen, man, it's, it means the world to people when you visit them. Yeah. He's exceptional, man. That guy's got a million hearts, bro. Good dude. You know, uh, it's really weird. We live in a place where people do weird things, you know, like people do weird things to get attention. Yeah. You know? And if you know anything about Steve Simone, he does everything from the heart. Yeah. With good intentions, you know. Like 100%. He's uh, he's one of those dudes that's in L.A. that you, you're happy to be his friend. He keeps you grounded. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you come from a society that's not, Selling their fucking blood in this town to get ahead. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's people in this town that you know who they are. They come up here, they talk to you, they don't give a fuck about you, man. Yeah. When you start making money, all of a sudden you're the best thing in the world. And they're there with their hand out, telling you how they helped you. And we always believed in you. You know, yeah. where were you when I was living in that one bedroom apartment and you wouldn't take my call? Yeah. But you have to put it all into perspective. But there's a, there's a certain element in this town that you look at and when the coke finishes, they're gonna be gone. They're gone. And then there's a certain element in this town that when the coke finishes, that's when they become your friend. And right. Steve Simone is one of those dudes. You yeah. Know? It's really a he brightens your day. He, he has does. Old he values. had lunch with me and my mom yesterday. At oh, he did. We went to Domingo's. Yeah. Unbelievable. He has a lot of old school values that you look at. We went to eat last week. Uh, we got the we got the New York fr- Thursday night. We didn't do much. Uh, we got to New York about five. Then Friday we started our fucking jaunt. And Friday night we went to Rudy's. Did you ever go to Rudy's with me? The yeah, Calamari yeah. place and stuff. It's been there since nineteen fucking seventy. Mm-hmm. And when I was in high school, they used to serve me, and they had squid, mm-hmm. and that's what they're known for statewide. Like mm. People go in there twenty-four Rudy's hours squid. a day. Rudy squid, yeah, mussels with red sauce. Oh, I like that. You got mad at me because I was too nervous to buy something expensive, so I got ravioli. Oh, and, like, oh damn. and it was still still delicious. It was amazing. It right? was amazing. Everything there is amazing. But we were eating, and my I could see some my wife and I asked her what happened? what's going on and she goes you know I don't see this in LA like people are having a conversation nobody's looking at their phone yeah guess what happened last week guys you ready for this a girl who I fuck with on Facebook uh huh hi how are you she was sitting at the table next to us me and my wife sat there and I go Terry this girl on the table over here on this date I fuck with her on Facebook. Watch this. And when she went to the bathroom, she came back and go. And she was like, oh, my God. I saw a post that you were in a park with the baby. I didn't know you were in Cliffside. It was fucking amazing. Dang. Like, what are the chances? Clifton? Cliffside. Cliffside oh. Park is where this place is at. And then I saw somebody. You're going to love this story. Then I saw this girl, Joyce. And I saw her. And I go, what's happening? And she goes, oh, my God, how are you? And the guy she was with, uh-huh. like, I knew her 30 years ago when she was married. 
but they break up, and now she's dating. She's dating a kid named Mikey Moore. That was one of those kids in the neighborhood that you always bumped into at two in the morning. Right. Like if you bumped into Mikey Moore, you were onto something. Right. Mikey Moore had a few bumps. He knew where there was a few bumps. He might have a Valium, but he was always solid. Like right. Mikey Moore is solid, but his, he had a lot of claim to fame. Like Mikey Moore was one of those guys that people underrated. Yeah. And he'd light some motherfuckers up really? from time to time. Like one time we robbed a Chinese restaurant delivery guy. <laughs> oh, we just took his fucking damn. card, dog. First of all, they got, we called the delivery to the park. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay? You show up at the park. How do you say that? To deliver f- to the park? Can you fucking believe that? That's great. They said, deliver it to eight. They said, deliver it to next to the park. <laughs> and when the guy came, we fucking bum rushed him. We took, <laughs> took the car. car. But listen to this. Mikey Moore delivered the Chinese food and kept the chi- and came back and gave me a little taste of the Vic. You understand me? After he dumped the fucking car, cleaned it off of Prince, the guy got hit in the head with like a bowling pin. Who the fuck robbed somebody with a bowling pin? Can you pin? fucking believe that's, it? That's gangs. That's Dog, that's it was next to this park. This place, this this North Bergen is known for all these little parks, like 51st Street Park. And, and each park had a different personality, a different person represented that park like 64th street field they were deep yeah into fucking drugs and booze and fucking acdc and yeah. fucking music and and they fought and you know they played football and they were heads but they fucking fought you know 88th street had more of a little that that park had a couple dabblings of heroin up there yeah. and, a little you artsy know, the, 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 no what no there was no <laughs> artsy there dog you know, I was telling somebody my neighborhood stores uh-huh. were the Spick store and the Chink store. <laughs> the Dragon Grocery was owned yeah. by a Chinese Cuban guy. Yeah. That was the Chink store, yeah. and the Cuban place was the Spick store. And that was how artsy that was. There was no art district. It was the Chink neighborhood, the Black neighborhood, the fucking Spick neighborhood. That's it's, hilarious. Uh, yeah, that's it, man. And the South is just like that. Black and I mean, you know, it's just black and white though. That's the crazy thing in our town. It's just black and white. That's what I would love about maybe like New York and New Jersey. It seemed like you'd have so many types of people around there. That must have been awesome. So what made you wake up and say Los Angeles? Anybody call you? Yeah, I had a buddy, actually. I uh, I had a buddy who was like, uh, come help me move, right? He lived out in San Francisco. So I was like, all right. I know. He's like, come out and hang out with me one weekend. So I got a plane ticket, came out to meet him, right? When I get there, he's like, I'm moving. And I'm like, what the fuck? Do you know I was coming in this weekend, right? He's like, nah, man, I'm moving uh, down to L.A. And so I just went with him. And then I just stayed for a while, back and forth, and stayed. It gets you, bro. It's kind of like this thing here. I don't think I'll stay forever. Oh, I miss it every day, man. Really? Mm -hmm. Still, 10 years here. How many times a year you go back? Yeah, probably four times a year. Two planes to go back? Uh, One. One plane to go back. You drive the 40 miles? Uh, Yeah, then I drive to get a rental car. Um, I got nieces and nephews now. I actually had a niece that was just born... uh, yeah, you know, like less than twenty four hours ago, a little girl. So congratulations, thanks, man. man. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Uh, Stella Blue, that's her name. So, but yeah, it's a chill place, man. Good family. Good to go home. You know, I love going home. Uh, I had you on the show for a reason, Theo Vaughn. I just don't put fucking anybody from the store on the show, anybody like that. I like your work ethic. You know, I think you're a solid guy. Um, when I got to the store, I noticed something. That the older guys were dicks. Yeah. They were real dicks. First week at the store, I got into a fist fight. Did you really? First week, dog. This, this last time back? No, 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 no. 1990 fucking seven. Oh, okay. I get past February fucking 19th. Wow, and I want to hear this. By February 24th, I'm already in a pushing match slash fisticuffs in front of the comedy store. What saves me is Mitzi's getting out of her car. And she goes, what's going on, guys? And she sees me, and she sees the other guy on the floor, and she looks at me, and she smiles. So she knew what time it was. My yeah. first week as a regular <laughs> here. I don't fuck around, all right? So I, I had, I thought about you today, and I thought about why I was having you on. And I, and I look at the, a lot of the guys at the comedy store, I give the utmost respect. Because for me to be a better comic, I have to be a better gentleman to you young guys. What makes me, what's gonna make me a great fucking comic is the love I give to you young guys. Not what I can pass on. I can't pass on nothing to you but addiction and chlamydia <laughs> and a bad fucking fungi toe. <laughs> what you could learn from me is what I didn't do and what didn't do, but the love I give you guys is the better I get as a comedian. And I know this because wow. 
Those guys that used to fucking hate on me, boom, they're gone. They're gone. I don't even think Facebook's let some on. Right. Uh, they're gone. You know, they're gone. And they were miserable at the end. They sat there and they sneered instead of sitting there and being supportive and giving right. that young guy a hug. I don't go on stage. I go on stage to do my motherfucking act, Theo Vaughn. Right. And when I see you back there, you have my utmost respect because you could have canceled or faked an injury or done whatever. And you go back there and you fucking go up there and go give it for Joey and you fucking bang it up. I've watched you. Yeah. Don't think I don't watch it. Yeah. So I want you Thanks, to understand man. where I'm fucking coming from. Dog, I got into a beef. I remember one time, Theo Vaughn, what the fuck would you do if I said, coming to the stage... There's nothing good to say about this guy, Theo Vaughn. What would you do to me on stage? You know, I, didn't, I didn't do anything. Lee. I didn't do. I think I didn't want to go at that realm. Even at that youth and comedy, even as crazy and coked up a fucking Indian as I was, something at that moment. But till this day, I hate that guy, and I don't see him ever again. Damn, I won't see. And it was him another ever store again. comic. Another store comic. Yeah, like those older guys. I was there the night when this older comic went at Joe Rogan on the main room. He brought Joe up and he insulted Joe and Joe said something Damn. to him. And they had to stop the show. They were going to duke it out <laughs> in the fucking main room. Over what? Over... The uh, intro the guy just, gave. It was... Listen, man, the guy moved to town and a year later he's making 30 grand, Lee. You're here 20 fucking years still getting a 1240 spot in the main yeah. room once a month. Yeah. What are you going to fucking feel like? And all of a sudden this young kid comes that's dirty and he's on an NBC show. Meanwhile, they've been telling you to fucking work clean, get a trumpet, <laughs> and uh, you know. And all of a sudden, they this young care. kid comes along, and I learn from instead of hating on the young guys, I learn from you fucking guys. You guys keep me current. I sit there sometimes and fucking, and I'm talking about not Sebastian. Sebastian's right. established. Oh, Bill Burr's established. I'm talking about you and Santini's and the fucking other guys. And yes, and these are all great. young guys. Those people after midnight. I've been there. Yeah. I fucking been there where it's twelve fucking forty five, and everybody went over. And now it's one ten. Yeah. And you got a ten fifteen at ABC. Yeah. You follow me, and yeah. there you are going fuck, fuck. but you stay. So. The only way for, to me to become better is to be, listen, if I want to be a mentor, I go back to prison right. and help Momos get their GEDs, okay? <laughs> I can't mentor nobody. I'm not here to mentor nobody. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Sit here and give you notes. Every, who the fuck am I yeah. to give you fucking notes? These comics, <laughs> who the fuck am I to give you notes? All I can do is hug you and go, you're a bad motherfucker. Keep fucking these motherfuckers up. Yeah. That's all you could do. And I think you become, I learned this the last two years at the store. Really? That because I've become a better comic because I'm sitting there. I went to the, you know, I would go out and see these young comics and they would inspire me. Yeah. When you're getting older, you see these young guys and you're like, God damn, I got to pick my motherfucking game up. I gotta, a, dude, that's a good attitude, you man. You got to go back to training camp. These young motherfuckers ain't fucking around. And then I backtrack. I go home and smoke a joint. And I go, ah. I remember when Joey Diaz used to dot his T's. <laughs> whatever, dot his I's. And, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And top his T's. Dude, man. That's, I, do you... That's fucking just... I mean, I don't even know, man. That's nuts. So always remember, like... I don't know what to say. I mean, that, that, that store is our fucking home. If you could go back in time, though, Joey Saturday interview, if you go back in time, do you think, were you the same way a long time ago, or you say you just feel like you learned this really now? Like, do you feel like you were always like that? Because I, sometimes I feel like I, it's hard to get the negative shit out of your head in this town, you know? I had nothing going on. Yeah. Why would somebody hate on me? Right. I wasn't good looking. I was long in the tooth. I had, not, I had no agent. I had nothing going on. The only person who gave me any fucking love was Mitzi Shaw. Yeah. That was it. And these old guys would sit there. They'd get there at five after nine. Theo, even if they didn't have a spot, they'd sit there and they'd sign up for that fucking list. And they'd lurk all night. Wow. And when you pulled up, you could see, like, all six of them go, fuck. Ugh. You know, like, they would beg for you not to show up so they could do their 15 minutes and get their, their glory for those 15 minutes. They would sell their soul. They would wish a heart attack on you so you could get up and do your fifth. You know, it was just a horrible feeling. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I remember I had surgery. One of the reasons I stopped going to the store was I had a fat ball in my neck, and it kept getting bigger. Every time I got ex every time I got excited, it was the funniest <laughs> thing. It would come out of here, and it was just throb out of my fucking neck. It was a Damn. fat ball. 
and I finally got the balls, and I went down, and it wasn't cancer. It was Thank just God. A, it was just a fat ball. Thing of fat. And the doctor had to slice my neck <laughs> and ball. stick his hand down there and take this fat ball out. And he showed it to me in a jar. Yeah. And I'll never forget what the first thing I thought when I looked at that fat ball. I thought about all the people that came up to me at the store. I don't know why, man. Right there in that operating table, when I'm coming out of my anesthesia, I'm talking to my wife, and he comes over. He goes, you want to see the fat ball we took out? And when he showed it to me, first thing I thought about was all the people at the store that shake your hand yeah. and you turn around like, fuck him. You know, I thought about all those people. Hey, congratulations on Spider-Man too, Fucking cokehead. Right. And you feel it. You know who's not on your team. Yeah. And you go home and you, 20 years ago, I would come down off my coke and actually go to their house and knock on their door and say, what the fuck was your problem last Damn. night? But as I got older, I thought about... Damn. I thought about why would they act that way? I can't lie to you. When I got here, guys, I was jealous of people from 97 to like 98 and a half. Then I figured it out. If I stopped being jealous, I could take that energy and do something good with it. Yeah. You were jealous of what they got? That energy. It's basically adjusting that energy. It's not a jealousy of a specific human being. It was a jealousy of how the f deal. How the fuck did you get innovative? I was in the belly room one night at 11.30, and the fucking guy came up to me. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. I'm here all the fucking time, and <laughs> nobody says boo to me. You're here at the fucking belly room on a Sunday at Innovative. Say fucking hello to you. That's what you're fucking trying to tell me. How did you get real stained gray? Oh, yeah. I, was a, I was in the main room on a Tuesday night. I did a spot during the black show. What are you talking about? Yeah. And here I am all the time. So it's that type of jealousy. Okay. How he had an agent and I didn't. Meanwhile, I was getting spots at the improv, the store, and the lab. <coughs> wow. You know, three months in, I was already Dude, on the board. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah, because I knew Gilbert Esquivel, so he put me up Mondays at the Laugh Factory. The improv liked me, and I was a regular at the store. Wow. But that's all I had going on. Right. So I couldn't figure out the hostility of these older comics. And it was like you, you, dealt, youth. you dealt with three or four of them from Tuesday to Thursday. Then on the weekends, they disappear and do whatever fucking shit they did. And then you dealt with another handful of them. And Charlie Hill was a good guy. Alan Stevens was a great mm. Alan Stevens got me on fucking Arliss opposite James Coburn. Damn. He saw me at the store. He's like, no, I got a role for you. It's coming up. Trust me. And all of a sudden, they called me. They gave me the fucking role. Charlie Hill was an Indian guy. I'll never forget him pulling me aside and going, listen, you gave, you made, you gave me belly laughs. Keep doing what you're doing. Right. You know, don't get me wrong. There was two or three of them that were gentlemen, but there was ten of them that were just there to watch you fucking fail, so Waiting. they could talk about you. So that's why I give you guys all the respect. Dude, that's what I wanted to thank tell you, you, man. No, I appreciate that, and man. Someday when you get older, yeah, and young guys will be there. I'll do that. You're gonna go. You know what, man? I'm gonna give these young guys the respect because I know what they go through in their daily life. Yeah, you got a bunch of no's, man. Yeah. So sometimes an older guy comes up to you and say, "Dog, that ain't about dick." Yeah. Get up tomorrow morning like you got the lottery ticket in your pocket. Watch what happens, bitch. <laughs> I Bam! remember where I heard it, man. Bam! I Fuck I these it. motherfuckers. What up, Lee? <laughs> Lee, up, San buddy? Diego, the 17th is already sold out. That's awesome. So we're thinking of adding a second show. You're going to be up in the mountains giving mama the high hard one. <laughs> up in fucking Utah, big there, giving mama the maminkia juice, huh? What dates you got coming up, my brother? I got uh, coming up. I got um, Pittsburgh. The I got Boston the seventeenth and eighteenth of uh, of this month. Okay, December. Sorry, I'm a little hot. Laugh Boston. I got Laugh Boston. That's a great club. <laughs> yeah, Laugh Boston the eighteenth and nineteenth. Actually, I think it is. Don't forget to go to <clears throat> Legal Z and tell them Lee sent you get ten percent off. Oh, really? Club. Yep. Oh, it's, it's a great. Yeah, done. I've heard of it. I worked there for okay. two years. With and then and I got um, and then I got uh, January. Oh, I got Pittsburgh, January sixth through eighth. I think it is. And you got a Netflix special. Uh, yeah, eighth through eleventh, sixth uh, through tenth in Pittsburgh, <clears throat> something like that. Which I'm proud of you because you got the shooting in your the home state. Thanks. Yeah, and then I got the Netflix Representing special. Representing like a motherfucker. New Orleans, baby, holding down the South. Trying to man, it was it was awesome, and I had I never felt so much love and support from my hometown. And uh, all the people I grew up with that just came out to fucking, it just like blew my mind, man. Like it was like kind of like validated, like all the fucking negative thoughts you have when you're a kid, you know, it's it like, oh man, maybe these people like thought I was an okay person, you know, I don't know. How old were you the first time you left Covington to go to <clears throat> New Orleans as an adventure by yourself without the parents to get your dick sucked? Oh, 15. Did you get your dick sucked? Yeah. I got my dick sucked. Wasn't great, but lightly sucked pretty much by this girl. 
when you were 15, you were already a man. No, 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 no. I no, was but, just. But you, you, you know, you. I was getting out there. You were getting. No, but I'm talking. What was your mentality like? Having an older dad, having. Oh, I knew. I was very aware. Okay. Very aware. And you were more aware than the kids your age. You just didn't say nothing because yeah. you got to say why you knew these things. Yeah, and then you seem weird. I feel like if you right, try to like explain right. yourself, and you've you always know. felt a little out of. That's the way I've always felt. Yeah, it's, I've always felt a little. You know, yeah, felt I've always felt pretty more. strange. And as you get older, you talk about it, but you still twitch. It's like I couldn't tell these stories 15 years ago. Yeah, until now there's no fucking way. Well, dude, watching guys like you is fucking inspires like guys like me so much, man. Because it's like you just say whatever. Like I'll literally after seeing one of your sets, I'm like, how does he? I just. To get to that spot in your life where you can just be so open about shit, that's it's unreal, man. It's cool. It's inspiring. So why, thanks, man. Why? Thanks. Thanks for what you I do. I don't bro. understand. You work hard. You come out here. You develop. And all of a sudden, you get some guy that goes, you know, Theo, I really like your Southern style. But I really like you for you to do uh, a more family show that I could pitch. Yeah. And then you go to Lee on the <clears> side <throat> and go, hey, Lee, man, you're a pretty good writer. Hook me up in the afternoons, and let's write together. Yeah. And you write this act that isn't you. Yeah. And. Oh, it would be tough, man. Do you understand what I'm I, trying yeah, to say Yeah, I couldn't even imagine. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? So I, I, when I got here, I was so desperate. There was times I didn't have a voice. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to anybody. Oh, yeah. Every, every comedian goes through that. Right. Where well, you come hear. here, and they confuse you a little bit. Yeah. Because you thought you had the goods, but now you start hearing things. And it's like Ronda Rousey right now. Ronda Rousey's not in hell because she got knocked out. Right. Ronda Rousey doesn't know where the drawing board, where to start. Right. So it's the same thing for comics. Like, you don't know. You get the wind knocked out of you. It's, it's I don't even know what the fuck I was talking about. It happens, about. man. It's, it's intense. <laughs> no worries. I have, to, I have to text this person I was going to meet at 9 right now and just let them know that I'm fucking Let me do the late. fucking sponsors here and we'll get you the fuck out of here. No, I don't mean that. I don't want to go. I'm no, just no, saying. No, 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 no. Don't worry about it. We're going to get the fuck out of here anyway. We're going to a jujitsu party. Joey, he's going to do a couple backflips like Circus Di Soleil. Oh, I'll watch that shit, yeah, dude. No. I'll watch that shit. Uh, the only other thing I got is I have my Netflix special coming out at the end of February. So check it out. It's called No Offense. And uh, and thanks for the love, man. Thanks for having me on, too. Hey, man. You know, I love you to death. Like I said, I love all these young guys. I love watching you. And all my friends love at, you, man. And so. I go home at night and I think about it. I go, wow. You know, it's nice that I could talk to all those younger guys. It's nice that they don't treat me like... I'm lurking. That's why I go to the store. I yeah. do my spot and I leave. Oh, dude, you have a maximum respect. Because I don't want to be like the old guy. Look at fucking Joey Diaz smoking pot with young kids. <laughs> right. I should be ashamed of it's myself. Dope, I am it's fucking you. ashamed of myself. It's you. You man. know, I shouldn't. I'm like a grandpa. I should be at home fucking mending a sweater and <laughs> rubbing Lee's feet in the future. <laughs> You gonna be rubbing my feet? Huh? Whatever. If I was your grandpa, you know me. I'm a dirty grandpa. Anyway, let's talk about fucking underwear, all right? It needs to be comfy, snug in all the right places. It needs to look good and feel good. I mean, that's the way, you know, you just don't want to wear underwear that's comfy. You want the world's most comfortable underwear, and that's me undies, plain and fucking simple, okay? Mm. I love me undies. You know why? Because it's got mobile. Every pair of MeUndies is made of micro moldal fabric, which doesn't sound sexy right now. But once you feel your MeUndies, you'll never go back to wearing regular underwear ever, ever, ever again. When I go to jiu-jitsu, I go to a gym now, that's all I wear is me MeUndies. Up. Yeah, because I want my nutsack to pop out. Yeah. Oh, I got that old man syndrome. Respect. With MeUndies, it keeps them tight, warm. It pulls the sweat away from your skin, your moisture. I've been in a position one time when I had the knee surgery. I had the same underwear on mm -hmm. for like 18 hours. Oh, that's a good feeling. That night I went to take my underwear off. So I thought my nutsack was going to smell and be <laughs> yeah. moist. It was fresh. That's oh. when I got sold on MeUndies when I had the fucking surgery. So let me tell you something. With MeUndies, you'll feel more comfortable than ever before. Plus that, MeUndies has a ton of different colors to choose from. It's the only place you're going to find the same styles for him and for her, and they got a new signature design every month. They also just launched a new boxer line. It's like wearing nothing at all, only better. And with the holidays, holidays around the corner, Me MeUndies makes a perfect gift. Mm. I think it's a little too late right now, but you know what? Fuck it. Give it to them a little late before New Year's. You know you never see the motherfuckers on the 25th anyway. Agreed. All right, so do me a favor. These are, are not your parents' stocking stuffers, but who cares? Get them a pair anyway. Your dad needs some action. Everybody <laughs> needs me on these. I don't care how old you are. Everybody needs a pair of me on these. I want some. So go to meonthese.com right now, slash Joey, and you're going to get 20% off your first order, plus all orders in the U.S. and Canada. 
Tell them, Lee, they ship for free. Always. Me on these even has a money back guarantee. If you don't love your first pair, you get to keep them and you get oh. the full refund. Bam! Wow. Plus the tax. That means you have nothing to lose, okay? Yeah. What's today's date? December 10th. Boom! So if you order me on these before December 13th, your MeUndies will be arrive on time for Christmas. Plain and fucking mm. simple. That means you got till bam Sunday to order <laughs> MeUndies. Go to MeUndies right now and get 20% off your first order on the world's most comfortable fucking underwear head to head with wow. any other pair of underwears. Go to MeUndies.com slash Joey right now. Mm. That's MeUndies.com slash Joey. Right now, I got the fucking leopard one with the sabotage. What's that? With the with the swirl, I love those are my favorite ones. The black ones are a little too tight. Then they sent me these long <laughs> pants. I cut those into underwear. That's, oh, that's the best beautiful. investment I ever made. We've done that. I took it to the Armenian fucking sewer. She sewed them down. They're like loose boxes. You have no idea how comfortable MeUndies is. Go to MeUndies.com right now slash and Joey. get slash Joey and get twenty percent off your first order. <laughs> And free shipping in U.S. <laughs> and Canada. Lee, what is going on with you tonight? I had a cough drop, but it got like super strong. I don't know if it's because I'm high. It a might cough be. drop. Yeah. Is your mom gonna be fucking pissed, bro? It's gonna be interesting. I'm, pr I'm praying to God she's asleep. Here, smoke oh, this. You have to. Uh, you got to periscope that, dude. Yeah, periscope your mom coming in, her yelling at you, looking at your eyeballs. Where are your eyeballs, Lee? <laughs> you know why you're out of, but put, stop and get some visine. So you don't look so fucking obvious, cocksucker. Anyway, my favorite people in the world, especially now over the holidays, let me tell you something. There's no better gift than the gift of Onnit. Onnit's got, listen, Alpha Brain, 100% money back guarantee. Shroom Tech Sport, Shroom Tech Immune, Hemp Force Protein, Kettlebells, Weights, Weighted Vest, Teapot. I mean, listen, I can't sit here and tell you all the great products they got. Do me a favor. Go to onnit.com right now and press in. Church. Boom, and get 10% wow. off your first order. Me, I'm a hemp protein cocoa type of dude, and I also like the shroom tech sport before I go to jujitsu. I'm still out of shape, and I'm still a fat fuck, but at least I go. I want to congratulate my brother Lee for taking third place in the fucking John Jock Christmas tournament while Amen, we're talking bro. about Onnit. He didn't take shroom tech. If not, he would have taken first place. Anyway, back to motherfucking... Uh... All right, here we go. You ever looking for a, you ever go to a magazine, you're looking for a particular article, it's a pain in the ass to find. But guess what? Texture will carry your favorite magazine. Let me, let, let's get into something about uh, magazines here. Texture is the app that gives you an all access pass to the world's best magazines right on your phone or tablet. Browse through hundreds of magazines and cherry pick the articles that interest you the most. The Texture editorial team recommends stories for you daily. Plus, their curated collections let you dive into deeper into the topics. <laughs> Sign up for Texture right now, and in mere se seconds, gain insider access to the very best reads plus exclusive content. With full access to top magazines across just every interest, Texture is the one present to open again and again. Do me a favor. Texture is offering my listeners a free trial right now. When you go to texture.com slash Joey, even better, give Texture as a gift between now and December 31st. Think about it. You'll gain unrestricted access to the world's best magazines from back issues, from hot rod, diabetic living, entertainment <laughs> <laughs> weekly. Diabetic <laughs> weekly. <laughs> you making a lot of sugar free donuts? <laughs> We got to start that one again, Lee, all right? <laughs> Disregard that past that. Listen, for all you magazine readers, let me tell you what I got for you guys for the holidays, all right? Two words. One word. Texture.com, all right? Texture.com will get... Listen, all I know is magazines are a pain in the ass. You ever go to People Magazine and it says it got a story in there and you got to go through the pages, 80... Da, 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 da. Texture cuts that in half. Mm -hmm. Texture is the app that gives you all access pass to the world's best magazines right on your phone or tablet. You get to browse hundreds of magazines and cherry pick the articles that interest you the most. The Texture editorial team recommends stories for you daily, plus their curated collections let you dive deeper into the topics that interest you. Sign up for Texture right now in a mere section. Second, you're going to gain insider access to the very best reads plus exclusive content. With the full access to the top magazines, just about every interest. <laughs> 
Texture is the one present that they'll open again and again. Let me tell you the magazines you got on Texture, all right? You got Bloomberg Markets, Bloomberg Business Week, Money Sense, Runner's World, Rolling Stone, 17, Siempre Mujer. You got, you got <laughs> Vanity Fair, Woman's Day, The New Yorker, Towns, Today's Parents, Surfer, Teen Vogue, The Hollywood Reporter. I could go on for an hour, all the magazines they got. The best thing is... Texture is offering my listeners a free trial right now when you go to texture.com slash Joey. Even better, give Texture as a gift between now and December 31st. Think about it. You'll gain unrestricted access to the world's best magazines, from back issues to the one on newsstands today. Order this fantastic gift for your loved one before December 31st. Try Texture for free right now when you go to texture.com slash Joey. Listen, man, you're going to fly. You want to read certain magazines, you download them before you go on the flight. You pop open your tablet, and there's your fucking Everything. articles that you want to read. Everything right you want to Everything read. Everything you read right in front of you. Plus, it gets deeper. It goes to certain articles, other articles that might interest you. But listen, do me a favor. The only way you're going to know for sure is go to texture.com slash Joey and order right now. You're going to get a free trial when you go to texture.com slash Joey. You can download articles and the whole issues for offline reading. Plus, you can share your subscription with the entire family, right? Like That's it. how much they so, so that means it's basically a gift for you, if you think about it. I like then it. Then you share the subscription with your entire family, so then you get, to, you get to see the magazines. And let me tell you what else I got for you guys, because I'm giving you all the action I got before the holiday, so you don't go, Joey, what the fuck? You don't tell me what you got? It's the holiday season. You don't know. You, you show up at these fucking places. You don't know what to buy these fucking people. Yeah. You know, like right now I'm looking at gift cards or whatever, Lee's scratching his head, hats. You don't know what to give people. <laughs> I got the fucking answer for your questions. And it's cheap, too. And it gets delivered right to your door. You ready for this? I know what it is. Club W. Yep. You're like, Joey, what the hell is Club W? Club W is a, is a, is a what do they call it, a, a wine? What do they call it's it? A wine club. It's wine a wine club. Wine subscription. Mm -hmm. But it's a wine subscription, but it's something... It's the uh, grape-to-glass wine revolution. What that means is, um, let me break it down for you even better. For 9,000 years, people have been making wine. That's how long people have been confused about which wine to drink. Red, white, Chardonnay, pa 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 You get a headache after they drink the wine. But for many of us, it's the shopping that causes the real headache. So many choices, what to learn. They're chewing mm -hmm. chicken. They got beef. And there's no guarantee you even like what you buy. All right, let me tell you something. It's tough getting a bottle of wine, especially on the holidays. You got to stop, park, do this, blah, 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 blah. I hate all that stuff. This is why I recommend this more than anything. I joined a new wine club, Club W. They changed the whole game. It's easy. You go to clubw.com. That's clubw.com, and you answer six simple questions. Their algorithm creates a palate profile just for you. Let's say you like fruity wines, you like sweet wines, bop, 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 you, you want to eat chicken. Then they send the wine directly to your door, mm -hmm. perfectly customized to match your taste. Club W is the leading grape-to-glass wine revolution. They work directly with the vineyards, and they cut out the middleman, rip, 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 which saves you dough. So with Club W, you get premium wine customized to your taste at a third of what they pay for at the store. You even have a no-risk, 100% 100 100 guarantee that you'll love what they send you. Let's do this. Let's end the fucking drama here. Right now, Club, uh, or Club W is offering my listeners 50% off your first order when you go to clubw.com slash Joey. That's clubw.com slash Joey. Stop wasting time. Stop and blah, blah, blah. Messing around at retail stores. Mm -hmm. Start drinking wine you know you're going to love. Shit. Go to clubw.com slash Joey and get 50% off your first order and end this whole holiday bullshit with the fucking wine, all right? That's clubw.com slash Joey. I want to thank Club W. I want to thank Texture. I want to thank... Me undies, and I want to thank on it. The reason why I was giggling was there's a candle right there, mm -hmm. and all I kept thinking about how that candle was, and I like that piece of paper. Is that a lollipop stick in there? Oh no, that's could a be wick. something beautiful. That's it's a beautiful. wick. So everything's beautiful. Here. Everybody's copacetic here. We'll be back <laughs> Sunday night. We might be back Saturday. We might do our own little fight companion on uh, what is it? Periscope. We don't know what we're gonna do. I want to thank my main man Theo Vaughn. Thank you, I man. Thank, thank my you. main man Lee Sciatica over here with this bad motherfucking hairdo. And Beautiful head. eyeballs. And that's it, guys. I'll see you next week. Don't forget, next Thursday, San Diego. 
Then after that, I'm at Ventura at the Chinese restaurant, the 23rd. Really? Amen. Yeah, you come. Can I come? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Man. Cool. Thank you, Theo. Thank you.